All right, I guess today's the day that I'm actually gonna go through with it. I'm gonna install the Kurt uh, wiring harness for my Toyota RAV4 hybrid. Uh, this looks to be an easier install than the gas model just because you don't have to run the power all the way up to the front of the vehicle since the battery is located in the trunk. Uh, but it still does present a couple of complications that I haven't wanted to tackle yet. One is just wire management in general. It's the main one for me. I like when my connector is outside of the vehicle. I know that it can be subject to weather and corrosion and sometimes heat because you do have to run them close to the exhaust uh, at times. But it seems to me to be more convenient and more aesthetically pleasing as well. So that's what I'm going to be trying to do today. It looks like there's a grommet, a rubber grommet underneath this side of the rear of the vehicle that I can string my wires through but there might be difficulty in actually getting the wires through um, with the con four pin connector attached. Uh, E-Trailer actually recommends that you cut off the four pin connector and then push your wires through and then reattach the four pin connectors using um, butt joints. I don't want to do that. I don't want to compromise the integrity of the, the hitch uh, if I can afford to. If this rubber grommet in here is big enough, I will cut it and maybe silicone the top of it. The other thing is, unless I remove the whole trunk panel, I'm going to be working in some tight quarters and bending some plastic that I'm not uh, too excited about bending. So I was no so. Okay. So with that being said, I'm going to start removing some of the panels here and try to get you a better view of what's going on. Because I'm a genius, I decided to film this during my neighbor's drive through graduation ceremony. Anyway, um, it's a lot of my hair, right? Uh, this install is supposed to be pretty easy. For tools, you really only need a flathead screwdriver, some wire cutters with uh, some gauging, and your trusty 10 millimeter socket. All right, easy stuff out of the way first. This panel just pops out. It sounded worse than it was. This is your driver side. Uh, believe it or not, the passenger side works the same exact way. We'll work our way over to it. We'll start on this threshold here. Okay, so we want to remove this threshold. I don't like doing this uh, unless I know what kind of fasteners are underneath in case I break them. But online, everybody seems to be getting this done without too much issue. I'm using a flathead screwdriver. I don't have a trim removal tool. There should be clips, at least two here, two here, and on the edges, maybe. So, screwdriver between the weather stripping and the trim piece. And I'm just trying to find a nice leverage point where I'm not bending my plastic too much. I'm pushing down against the body. There's one pop. There's the second, here's the third, and now I should be able to remove this by hand. There's four, five, came out with it, and six is right there. So we can move this out of the way. All right, passenger side similar. We're going to remove this. Comes right out. Uh, yeah, it's good. And the cargo net actually is pretty nifty. It has these tabs here on either side. You can pull them, push down and pull out, and it comes right out. I feel like that's kind of thoughtful. At that point, um, there's a hand grab here, and this. Uh, looks like it will pull out. Yep. Had to be thoughtful because this is where your battery is. If you need jump started, gotta go there. 
Okay, so the last thing we're going to do is actually be pulling this trim away from the body on the edges just enough to get our hands through. But before we do that, there's a 10 millimeter bolt here connected to this D-ring and another on the other side. So let's see if we can get you a good angle on that. So you've got a bolt, a washer, and that goes into your D-ring. Bolt, washer, D-ring. Okay. I'm just going to sit that there. Already I've gotten some sort of black grease on my hand here. So if you want to wear gloves, do that. Driver's side. Same thing on this side, um, the D is facing downward, so it's a U, um, shaped as a U. All right. All right, back on the outside of the vehicle, there is a trim fastener here. You should be able to insert your flathead screwdriver pop the center out and with that you should be able to remove the entire fastener just like that and it's not broken doing the same on the other side so with that removed we'll try to remove the trim piece here I'm just gonna pull on mine all right, so just so you know, we can't remove the whole thing. We're really just pulling it away from the body enough to work. So there's definitely something holding me right around here. But it can't be that. There we go. Here we are. We're loose. Now we're really going to see how much room we have to work with. All of our work is supposed to be completed in here on this side. Um, it's not much. It is a bit tight. And it looks like removing that D-ring back there would relieve some of the stress for me if I wanted to. Maybe even removing this tonneau. So I'm going to remove the tonneau. We do have a little bit more mobility here. So, the only reason we have to do this is because Toyota didn't think that we should have an access to the back side of our taillights here. There's a harness for your taillight right here. You probably aren't seeing much. Let me see if I get you in there. I'm hoping this view helps a little, but I don't think it does. I'm pulling out, it's like a cream colored. A screwdriver head here it is right there this is plug-and-play um, you take the wire from your tail light and you plug it into the new harness 
clicks into place. That's what you want. This is the portion of the harness with yellow, brown, white, and red. Then you have a new clip here. And this new clip goes in the position of the old clip. And we're looking for a click. Sorry, I can't see, so you can't either. All right. So, I don't really care for all the rubbing. I guess if I was really upset about it, I would do something and remove the rest of the interior pieces. But... E trailer didn't, so I'm gonna try not to. Okay, I've decided to deviate from the plan a little bit. I'm I'm getting a lot of flex here that I don't really like, so I'm removing this screw here with a Phillips screwdriver. I already did it, but here you go. What I'm gearing up towards is mounting the converter box, which is trapped under here. mounting this converter box flat side down onto the frame and then there is a ground wire here oh this is a mess right got a ground wire with a eyelet that eyelet is supposed to be secured to the body with this self-tapping screw like this uh, there's not much room in there to operate in addition, this is the grommet I pulled out of the bottom. What I'm going to do is cut it here. Then I'm going to slide my wiring harness, just four wires, through the side of it. Then I'm going to put the grommet back in place. The wires will be in the center of it. And then I'll go over the top of that with silicone. My harness will then be below the vehicle. I'll give you some shots of that. And I will be happier that way. Um, we talk about corrosion and stuff, but it does come with this rubber cap, which is standard on every harness I've ever used, and they all have been fine. I haven't had really any corrosion issues, so that should keep it pretty safe. It's pretty snug. Now, like I said, e-trailer suggested you take this and you cut the four, you string them through the grommet, and move on with your life. I just don't think that's me. So I'm going to pass on that. There's not much exciting going on here right now, but I'm about to put this adhesive onto the back of the converter box. And it's double sided. Press it down. And because it's so tight in here, it's going to get a little awkward for me. I'm just deciding how, what angle I want. Yep, I want it angled this way. I've gotten the adhesive all dirty now. There's a sub here. You know, you're thinking about this uh, logically. There's a subwoofer, and you don't really want to put anything that could rattle around it. So I'm trying to find the best place to put the thing. And I'm not satisfied yet. Okay. E-Trailer did mention that. They removed this harness from the bracket. That does give me a... Uh, a little more length. Okay. We'll try that. All right, the universe is working against us. I've un uncoiled all of my harness here now to see what I'm working with. I pulled the rubber grommet out, remember, and I said I'm going to cut it and place the wires in. My thought was the plug is smaller than the grommet. That's true, but it's larger than the hole. So when I'm trying to shove this through the hole, that is the shortfall. 
So now I have to rethink how I want to handle that. I'm going to revisit it. I won't labor over it, over the video. Now. All right, deviating from the plan, I have this little tiny hand drill that I got as a gift for Christmas. It's just small enough to to maybe be useful for this job. I have my ta self-tapping screw and I'm going to try to drill in the white ground wire here to the frame of the body. Huh. You know, you thought this wouldn't work because it's a piece of... Well, you thought it wouldn't work if you... So, what we've completed here is we have the driver's side tail light connected we have the converter box mounted we have the ground grounded and now we have to splice the power together with a butt joint so the goal now is to take this butt joint here and place in my power wire and then crimp that bad boy on Alright, now we're nice and secure. So they give you the longest bit of wire in the world because this normally would have to go all the way under your vehicle through that rubber grommet that's given us fits into the battery up front. But in our case, all we have to do is run it across the trunk into the battery itself. These aren't even my good... cutters but that works beautifully hope you got it hope you saw it on camera maybe you didn't it's tight but not as tight as I'd like it Okay, okay, back to it. I just had to put a band-aid on real quick. So, there is a piece of sheet metal under there that is going upward. I just want to see if we can maybe mess some things up. Let me show you. Click then. And over here clicked in just doing a little bit of cable management here before I tackle the battery compartment uh, there is a little channel that runs right underneath your um, door jam here and I'm shoving the power cable and the cable for the passenger tail lights in All right, maybe a bit of a different perspective here what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this inline fuse and we're going to join it with the power cable that's running from the driver's side and then we're going to we use a, a butt joint for that and then we will use this grounding eye uh, in order to connect to the battery ter terminal, the positive end, and that is what will power our hitch. So here we go. Butt joint. This is nice that it's pre-trimmed for you. Hmm. 
Huh. I just realized that this is copper and this is more of a silver. So, into the butt joint. Alright, so if you're wondering how I knew this was the positive side, this cap was here. You push in these two and you just pull it off. And here we are. I've pulled the bolt off. Now I'm going to put my eyelet for the ground here. And I'm going to tighten her up with the 12 millimeter socket. Alright, and that's that. But... I might want to get a better position so my cover can go back on. So let me see if that's possible. I'm thinking here. The cover is here. There you go. It's back on. And this tucks down here. I'm happy with that. I don't like these wires sitting here, so I'm tucking them back behind the panel. I'm happy with that. I'm really not happy with the cable management here. I've never used duct tape on cars, um, but I think maybe this is the right thing. The channel underneath this this threshold seems to be perfect for, for what, what we want, and that's hiding these cables. So I'm gonna try to see if I can get the cables to cooperate. There you have it. Uh, we have the wiring harness installed in the tire compartment, spare tire compartment. Right now it's just going to be something that pigtails out whenever we need it because I couldn't get the grommet situation to work unless I ream that hole out, which I'm not prepared to do yet. So I'm going to rethink that. I hope that this video helps someone out there. The the e-trailer the e stuff is great. It's fantastic. Uh, I use them um, as a resource and I just wanted to show you that a normal guy like me could also install it you could install your wiring harness it's not a big deal everything's here I didn't break anything nothing scuffed up a little bit of dirt on my hands I did cut my finger doing something I shouldn't have done it's not a big cut just put the band-aid on for cleanliness uh, the video itself is is really just to document and show you what you might actually encounter because of the guys who install the things with e-trailer they've been doing it for years and they know what they're doing I am just an average guy uh, with that being said go look at their video if this one didn't help and you got to mine somehow before theirs my video probably won't show up for a long time uh, this is my 2020 RAV4 hybrid XSE it now has a torque lift eco hitch. It now has a Kurt wiring harness. Um, this is the Kurt wiring harness. Everything's good to go. Battery's locked up. All I have to do is, is test it with my trailer, which I'm just too hot to do right now, uh, to be honest with you. It's in, the, it's in the backyard. And on that note, I'm out. Look at that slanted view.